Hello, welcome to your Christmas Ref Show. It's the final Ref Show of 2015. We were hoping that we weren't going to be feasting on Yuletide mistakes, but I'm afraid there are quite a few and some learning points for referees as a result of the games on Boxing Day. We'll be re reviewing those with Carlton Palmer and with Glenn Turner. And when it comes to mistakes, big news on a big move to reduce them. Uh, video referees, this is accelerating. Uh, a shake of the head from Carlton. We may disagree on a few points here, just before we get Carlton's view to, to kick us off on this. A questionnaire is being sent by the FA, who are in favour, supporting the video referee move, questionnaire to all Premier League, interestingly Football League clubs as well. They're perhaps less likely to get one in the short term because of the, the cost. Uh, but also the International Football Association Board, the lawmaking body if you like, are going to discuss it in March. So it's moving in that direction, Carlton, whether you like it or not. Well, it is, but it's taking that element for, 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 for supporters and even for players. It's, it's the discussion. It's the argument of a Saturday night having a beer about was he onside, was he offside, was it a bad tackle? What it, You know, you're not going to, even if they bring it in, there's still going to be incidents that they'll be that will, they'll be talking about afterwards. I, I, as a, as a TV, TV commentator, even sometimes when I re replay it and look at it, you still aren't sure. What I'm saying is if they keep it simple, which is for me, if you're offside, you're offside, stick with that law. So forget this air's breath or whatever, or inactive or half the players and the managers still don't understand yeah. those rules now. Yeah. But the idea behind this is it's only for big, big decisions. The big calls, penalty, was it a penalty, was it not, as the referee called it wrong, in which case he could just quickly confer, and it can happen quite quickly, can't it? An off-the-ball elbow, red cut, something like that. What do you think, Glenn? It, it, it does give me a great deal of concern, this one, Alan. And the reason is that we've already got video reviewing. We've already got it in place for major incidents, uh, something that the referee missed during the course of the game, somebody's belt, somebody, for instance. The FA can sort that out no, on video review already. That's just a punish, already. really, and he yeah. can't change what actually happens. So. We, we've now got it in for goal line technology, which has been a great thing. The, the point I'm making is it's a continual drip feed of more and more and more review by video. And like Carlton says, the game thrives on controversy. That's why everybody talks about football in the pub on a Saturday night. Now, as, as a support of my beloved Chesterfield, the last thing I want to be doing is going into the pub on a Saturday night, which is unfortunately I get forced into quite a lot on the back of my recent results, but going into the pub on a Saturday night and talking about the players and what they've not done. It's great as a supporter to go in and talk about the man or the woman in the middle having messed up. That makes me feel a lot better because it's not the fault of my heroes in blue. No. over -clinicise the game and we're going to have to start reviewing as supporters how we view our own, own players I and mean, I don't want to do that. As a Chesterfield supporter, <laughs> mm. and I am a Chesterfield supporter yeah, yeah. as well, both of us could have been going to Wembley in 1997 yes. Yes. because yeah. Jonathan Howard's shot right. was over the line. Of course line. it was. Um, yeah, yeah. We, it we was got a 3-1 lead We against got to the cup final and we just weren't allowed to play in it, Alan. Oh, right. <laughs> and I'm still in therapy, so thanks for bringing that one up. <laughs> yeah. I've never recovered from it either. No, no. But that's a big call. Yes, it is. And that would have been given a goal. <laughs> yes. Very, very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. On a, you know, within yeah, but it happens. Ten, so it, it does happen. happen. Listen, Al. In, in a one-off situation, in a one-off match, a, a, a decision could affect the game. But winning a league is won over how many games? <laughs> Getting relegated is won over how many games? If you go down on a goal difference or you go down on a, on a referee's decision on the last day of the season, you can't blame the referee for that. You've had 40-odd games to sort yourself out. So these things happen and it's part of the game. For me, I don't like, you know, as a defender, and I teach my kids now and still teach them, when the ball goes forward, squeeze up. Mm. Well, you, if you squeeze up and somebody, like, like Glenn was just saying, like Thierry Henry, 10 yards, 15 mm. yards the other side, he could be 20 yards that side and you still wouldn't catch him, no. right? And he's, and he's not interfering with the game. Mm. You've got to teach him the right rules. So for me, keep it simple. We, we're complicating it too much. And that's why the game is for me, I don't, I don't watch a game and think, oh, this is enjoyable now. Do you know what I mean? I watch a game and I think everybody's frightened and made mistakes, including the officials. Right. There's also another point. And you think they'd be even more frightened of it if they've actually got help. This is supposed to help them, not hinder them. The, the laws of the game are supposed to be global and be fo football at every level throughout the world. Now, OK, the Premier League clubs can afford to introduce video technology. What happens down at the parks on a Sunday morning? 
You can't have it because so it, yet again, it's, it, there's an unfairness and a disparity between the game at the very top and the game lower down. Uh, uh, you are the ref. We're going to survey all of our experts, including you two guys, and then produce what we think is the you are the ref site view on it. Some are very heavily in favour, some have reservations like you do. But let's have a look at some incidents on Boxing Day, which had there been a referee, video referee in the stand, we could have ironed out some key mistakes. Can I just start with Mike Dean, who was refereeing Aston Villa against West Ham. Keith Tackett's view firmly that West Ham should have had two penalties in that game. Roger East, Swansea won uh, West Bromwich Albion nil. Keith described it as the worst performance of the weekend. This was by East, although in fairness to him, he's been pretty consistently good this season. Uh, West Brom denied a penalty for a foul on Chris Brunt. OK? Uh, there was another penalty claimed by Albion where I think it was Callum McManaman in Keith's view should have been booked for simulation. OK, but the main one you want to talk about is John Moss's game. Southampton... Shock victory over Arsenal by four goals to nil. I don't know. I don't know what it is about Mossy. You know, he, he can he can have a couple of games where he does okay, and you, and you think, oh God, well done, John. Come on now, then push on, push on, and then it all falls apart again. What what is it with Mossy and this lack of consistency? Because here we are again. His name's right up there. You know, the the opening three goals shouldn't have been. There was, oh, I can't blame him for the first one. That's, that's a mistake by the assistant. Yeah. The lad, he was offside. You know, that's a factual thing. He was offside. That should have been choked off before he got anywhere near the goal. The second one, there's a foul by Shane Long. You can, but Mossy's missed that. What is it about you, Jonathan? You, 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 you seem to be plodding along nicely for a couple of games, and that's probably as, as, as kindly as I can put it. You plod along. And then it all falls apart. Come on, get some consistency. And the third game. goal, as well been, as yeah, should have been a goal kick, not a corner. Right. Yeah, but there was a. I think that's a little bit difficult. Yeah, that, that, the third I'm not, one, I'm not the third one. You not know, at deal. the end of the day, I still say this: Southampton deserve to win the game, did, oh. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though the referees yeah, yeah. made some mistakes, yeah. right? The, the first yes. one offside. I know what you're saying, but it's a difficult call. Me and Ron were watching the game, and it's one of those. Is it, isn't it? You and Ron, this is Ron Atkinson, big Ron Atkinson, and Carlton sees a lot of him. Uh, you know, he was a mentor to you in, in, in your football crib. I know before we came on here, you, Ron made an interesting point about mistakes during the course of his very long managerial career. What was that, what well, was that he, point? He, he says in all of his career, he doesn't think five, five decisions over the course of his career have affected the game. He always used to say, as, as players, he always used to say to us, don't get involved with the referee. Leave it alone because he said all that will do is affect your performance in the game. Because you get fixated, oh, the referee hasn't given a free kick or he hasn't given this or he's given that. And you get fixated. It's 90 minutes to win a game. Hey, by the way, Southampton deserved to win the game. I mean, the referee for the second one was Shane Long. He, he can't see that from the position he, he's in. And the third one, I don't think he can see. And all of it in total was... Southampton played well and Arsenal played poor. So you've got to be a little bit careful about referees as well. They do make uh, poor decisions, just like players make poor decisions, just like players have poor performances. You I think it's the, getting a bit too it's clinical the on them. the one that particularly frustrates me, Alan. It's bound to because that's my bag line. Isn't it? Um, that, I know Carlton says it's a difficult decision because it's tight. He's not, a, he's not a long way offside. So in that respect, I can buy into the argument that it's, it's, it's tight in terms of distance he was offside. It's not a difficult decision in that he was doing it from an almost standing position. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're almost standing still, and the lino was almost still, He's, he's got time and his mind should be nice and calm to be able to judge the fact, oh, he's off, he's off, he's off, he's off, the ball's come, he's off. Now, he's not done that. If it was one of those where it's got lumped from centre-half to centre-forward and the defence are pushing out at the same time as the centre-forward's crossing, they are difficult. The ball's travelled a distance and he's moving at speed, one coming out, one going in. They are difficult calls. When you're standing still on the line, he should be in that mode of thought is off, is off, is off, is off, ball scum is off. And why isn't it why isn't that happening? Now I have a theory on that and that's because of a lack of decent quality training. Somebody's not teaching these lads this is what you should be doing. Talking yourself through games. And I don't believe that this current crop... Well, there, there will be no excuse for a lack of quality training in the future with this elite panel mm. of assistant referees that's been created full time. So long yeah. as they've got a decent coach training them, Alan. That's going to be the crux. You know, they can set up all the training sessions that they want. Your suggestion? If it's not a quality coach... Who should they appoint there? What's Phil Sharp doing? World Cup final assistant referee. Where is he? 
Where, where's Dave Babsky now? Top, top assistant referee. Where is he? Instead, we've got a, a lad in charge who, are, who is a personal friend of mine. It, you know, it, it hurts me to say this, but he had nothing of a career, really. You know, if I, if I mentioned his name, would anybody know him even? Mention it. Adam Watts. Who is, you know, does anybody remember Adam Watts yeah, as being a be top assistant referee? You've got to be careful with that. Arsene Wenger, as long as he's been managing in the Premier League, never had a top career. Josie Mourinho, yeah. one but, of the But he pr he's in. proven himself since. The point I'm making is that during his career on the line, Adam Watts didn't really prove himself, yeah. Gordon. He didn't become a top lino. You think I mean, you have I'm, to be a top lino in I order to I think you've to got to have been in that environment. Not? I think you've got to have been. No, I, I, I agree with that. I, I, I don't... I don't advocate that you've got to have done something to the highest level to be able to put it across, but I do think if somebody was talking to me and trying to tell me how to defend who's not played at the level I've played, I'm like looking and saying... So we're not going to do that. We're going to wrap up the, the first half. Plenty to come in the second half. Some referees did very well. There's one or two other mistakes. And Wayne Rooney gets a favourable mention. Join us for that.